Good morning and or good evening. Please join with me in singing our opening song. It can be found at number 492, Jerusalem, My Destiny. We'll sing verses 1, 2, and 3. I have fixed my eyes on your hills, Jerusalem, my destiny. Though I cannot see the end for me, I cannot turn away. We have set our hearts for the way. This journey is our destiny. Let no one walk alone. The journey makes us Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, today we are beginning the first Sunday of Lent. As we begin this celebration, let us surrender before our Lord accepting, repenting for all our sins, seeking for his mercy. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. You came to call sinners. 
Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord. have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant Almighty God, through the early observances of Holy Lent, that we may grow in understanding of the riches hidden in Christ, and by worthy conduct pursue their effects. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. God said to Noah and to his sons with him, See, I am now establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that was with you, all the birds and the various tame and wild animals that were with you and came out of the ark. I will establish my covenant with you, that never again shall all bodily creatures be destroyed by the waters of a flood. There shall not be another flood to devastate the earth. God added, This is the sign that I am giving for all ages to come of the covenant between me and you and every living creature with you. I set my bow in the clouds to serve as a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow appears in the clouds, I will recall the covenant I have made between me and you and all living things, so that the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all mortal beings. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The words to our psalm response come from Psalm 25. Teach me your ways, O Lord.
reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, Christ suffered for, our sin, for sins once, the righteous for the sake of the unrighteous, that he might lead you to God. Put to death in the flesh, he was brought to life in the spirit. In it he also went to preach to the spirits in prison who had once been disobedient while God patiently waited in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few persons, eight in all, were saved through water. This prefigured baptism which saves you now. It is not a removal of dirt from the body, but an appeal to God for a clear conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers subject to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Glory to you, O Word of God, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to you, O Word of God, Lord Jesus Christ. We do not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Glory to you, O Word of God, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to you, O Word of God, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. The Spirit drove Jesus out into the desert, and he remained in the desert for 40 days, tempted by Satan. He was among wild beasts, and the angels ministered to him. After John had been arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the gospel of God. This is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Have you ever longed to be taken away somewhere else so that your cares and troubles can just all go away? With the pandemic going on and with this snowy and cold weather we've been having recently, this may be something that we're all hoping for. The rainbow that we heard about today in the first reading reminded me of one of my favorite childhood mo movies. The Wizard of Oz, where Dorothy longed to be taken away from her cares at the end of the rainbow. Dorothy longed to be in a perfect land beyond the horizon. She got her wish and was taken to the land of Oz. But she soon found out that her troubles only got worse in that land of Oz. We may yearn to escape and to be taken somewhere else, but if we remember that rainbow as that reminder that God is the one to rely on when we have troubles. In today's first reading, God makes a covenant with Noah to never again destroy all the men and the creatures of the earth through a flood. And that reminder of the covenant is the rainbow. This covenant is fulfilled through Jesus who brings about the kingdom of God. Today's gospel is a brief one, but it has a powerful message. 
In the first part, we hear about Jesus overcoming the temptation by Satan in the desert. There's not a lot of details in the Gospel of Mark about this encounter, but it gives us hope. We're told the Spirit drove Jesus out into the desert. Just prior to this, John the Baptist had baptized Jesus, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him. Jesus' immediate action after this baptism by John is to battle Satan for those 40 days in the desert. And of course, Jesus resisted the devil's temptation to sin. Jesus' victory over the devil reverses the consequences of Adam and Eve's sin, which brought about death. Now, Jesus wasn't in need of baptism as he was without sin, but by being baptized and tested in the desert, he united himself to us with our struggles to overcome sin. His obedience in following the Father's will and triumph over Satan is a triumph for us, and this is good news. In the second part of the gospel, Jesus proclaims, now is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. The kingdom of God is a very prominent theme in Jesus' public ministry. In proclaiming the kingdom, he's announcing that God's reign has come to bear upon the earth through himself. The people of Israel had longed for God's reign to come through the Messiah who would overcome the political powers and restore a rightful ruler to Israel. But Jesus wasn't the ruler or the Messiah that they expected. He's a humble servant, and he not only came to restore and save the people of Israel, he came from all of us. Jesus continues his ministry in a call to repentance and baptism, but he adds a new dimension as he tells us, repent and believe in the gospel. Another word for the gospel is the good news. And what is this good news? It's this new covenant established by Jesus in his sacrifice, in dying for us and rising again so we can have eternal life by having faith in him. This new covenant makes salvation possible in eternal life, and this indeed is good news. The season of Lent is our annual call in the church to conversion and become more Christ-like so we can help Jesus bring about that kingdom of God. Lent can be a challenging time for us. It's a time that we deny ourselves through daily sacrifices. The church has set this time apart for our three disciplines of prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. These practices are meant to lead us to a conversion to be more Christ-like so we can bring about that kingdom of God and celebrate the Easter joy of the risen Lord. If we keep this destination in mind and unite our sufferings through Lent with Jesus, it can make this time of Lent one of joyful anticipation of the Easter joy. Now, we don't need to go it alone during Lent. Through our baptism, we're given the gift of the Holy Spirit to bring about the virtues to help us on this journey. And this time of conversion can help strengthen those virtues. We can also call on our guardian angel to help fight the temptation the devil puts in our way. And of course, our family, friends, and faith community are there to help and support us. But even with this help, we may fail at keeping our Lenten observances and yield to those temptations. Don't get discouraged by the temptations. These failures may not be at all that bad because they help us as a reminder that we do need a savior. When we struggle with these temptations, we can call on Jesus as he faced some of these same temptations and it was united with us in our struggles. He understands what we're going through and has compassion for us. If we fail in our Lenten disciplines or or fall into sin, don't give up. 
ask Jesus for help, and just start over. If you need to go to confession, we'll have plenty of opportunities over the Lenten season to ask for forgiveness of Jesus in the sacrament of reconciliation. Now, if you haven't chosen what to do for your Lenten disciplines of fasting, prayer, and almsgiving, I'd like to offer a few for consideration. We're called to prayer, and one of the prayers that's a great gift that Jesus gave to us is the Our Father. But we tend to kind of rattle through that really quickly many times. And it may be a good practice over Lent to just slowly pray the Our Father and maybe pick one line a week to really meditate on. One of the ones that I think is especially important is to focus on thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. How can we help to bring about the kingdom of God and heaven here on earth? A great way to do this is to actively practice almsgiving and fasting. Consider whatever you're giving up by dedicating time or, your, or, or uh, money to support the Lenten ministries that the church has dedicated for this time of the outreach ministry or Johnson County C Senior Services as those things you can dedicate for your almsgiving during Lent. A final suggestion would be to spend time to prayerfully read an entire gospel from start to finish. During this cycle, the church year on Sundays in cycle B, we're actually reading the Gospel of Mark, which is the shortest gospel. And that might be a, a good one if you've never sat down to read a gospel and maybe take a chapter a day or every couple of days. And by spending that time in the gospel, we're getting to know Jesus as he walked through his public ministry. And that's the best way to spend time with Jesus, reflecting prayerfully. If you finish that gospel before the end of Lent, why not go ahead and start on one of the other gospels, Luke, Matthew, or John. These practices will help you to repent and believe in the gospel. So, as we continue the Lenten season, let's remember the sign of the rainbow as God's covenant with us and set your sights on the kingdom of God. The new covenant of Jesus promises us eternal life if we have faith with him. Through the waters of baptism that we've received, we receive the grace of the Holy Spirit to help us live the life of virtues that help us to resist temptations and sin. It also helps to make the kingdom of God present to those around us through our acts of service to others. As we prepare to receive the Eucharist, let us all ask God and thank him for the Holy Spirit and his angels to help us on our Lenten journey. I believe in one God maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through whom all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit, who was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death, was buried, he rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated, seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. 
I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life to the world to come. Amen. My dear brethren, let us bring before the Lord all our prayers and petitions. For Pope Francis, Archbishop Thompson, and all our bishops, may Christ, who suffered once for our sins, lead them to God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For doctors, nurses, and frontline workers, may they know of our gratitude. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our Lord. prayer. For Christians everywhere, may we repent and believe in the gospel. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who suffered from this past week's storm, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, may they rejoice in heaven with our Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory, especially Mary Weber, Peggy Bowman, Bob Witt, and Napoleon Waterloo. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear Lord. our prayer. Almighty God, accept all our prayers and bless them we make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We sing at number 482, the cross of Jesus. Strengthen hearts that have grown feeble, fill our lives with truth and grace. Only you can win our freedom, only you can bring us peace. Only in the cross of Jesus will the captives find release. within create a new heart melt away the winter chill help us now to make a new start help us now to know your will washed in waters of forgiveness cleansed in waters of new birth lead us to the cross of jesus bringing life to all the earth. In the darkness that surrounds us, we have lost you from our sight. Even though your love has found us, we embrace the powers of night. Scatter now our deepest darkness, guide our hearts into the light. Join us to the cross of Jesus, help us set our living right. Call us forth to walk in justice, rescue us from sin and grave. Through the power of your spirit, breathe in us the breath that saves. Strengthen us in our communion, one in word and cup and bread. Here within the cross of Jesus, all who hunger will be fed. Pray, brethren, that the sacrifice of mine and yours be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. Give us the right disposition, O Lord, we pray, to make these offerings, for with them we celebrate the beginning of this venerable and sacred time. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It's truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. By abstaining 40 days from earthly food, he consecrated through his fast the pattern of a Lenten observance. And by overturning all the snares of the ancient serpent, taught us to cast out the leaven of malice, so that celebrating worthily the Paschal mystery, we might pass over at last to the eternal Paschal feast. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed a holy Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring it to the fullness of charity, together with our Pope Francis, our Bishop Charles, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who are pleased to you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours 
forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. Let us pray to our Heavenly Father in the words of our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art, who art in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be thy, thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come thy, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as we forgive, forgive those who trespass, trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil and grant us peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. On you stay, qui toles peccata mundi, miserere nobis. On you stay, qui toles peccata mundi, miserere Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Body of the Lord 
and drink with faith the blood for you outpoured, saved by Christ's body and his holy blood. With souls refreshed, we give our thanks to God. Draw near, draw near, take the body of your Lord. Draw near, draw near, drink the blood for you outpour. Christ, our Redeemer, God's eternal Son, has by his cross and blood the victory won. He spent his life for greatest and for least, pays Christ the Paschal victim, Christ the priest. Draw near, draw the body of your Lord. Draw near, draw near, drink the blood for you outpoured. Let us pray. Renewed now with the heavenly bread by which faith is nourished, hope increased, and charity strengthened, we pray, O Lord, that we may learn to hunger for Christ, the true and living bread, and strive to live by every word which proceeds from your mouth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you in the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. As we go forth, we sing at number 479, Lord, who throughout these 40 days. Lord, who throughout these forty days for us did fast and pray, teach us to overcome our sins and close by you to stay. As you with Satan did contend and did the victory win, O oh, give us strength in you to fight, in you to conquer sin. As you did hunger and did thirst, so teach us, gracious Lord, to die to self and only live by your most holy word. And through these days of penitence, and through your passion tide, forevermore in life and death, O Lord, with us abide. Abide with us that when this life of suffering is past, an Easter of unending joy we may attain at last.